The planet loomed below us like a black hole waiting to swallow our ship whole. Everything had gone wrong in a matter of seconds. The cargo freighter, once a symbol of intergalactic trade and cooperation, now tumbled through the atmosphere of an uncharted world like a dying star. The bridge was filled with alarms and flashing lights, and the crew's panicked shouts blurred into the mechanical roar of malfunctioning systems. Brace for impact, someone shouted, but it was too late. We hit the surface hard. The ground rushed up like a hammer, slamming into the freighter's hull with bone-rattling force. The ship screeched and groaned as it plowed into the rocky terrain, tearing apart in a storm of shattered metal and fire. For a long moment, everything was chaos. Then, silence. I groaned, forcing my eyes open. I was alive. Somehow, the freighter wasn't. The wreckage stretched out around me, torn into jagged pieces like some cosmic predator had taken a bite out of it. I could see smoke rising in the distance, and the bitter stench of burnt fuel filled the air. I staggered to my feet, trying to shake off the daze. Around me, some of the other survivors were beginning to stir. Viltoxians, Grivax, Ushrans, Zorvans, all alien races that were just passengers on what was supposed to be a routine cargo run. But now, we were all stranded on this forsaken rock. This planet, it's classified as a death world, one of the Viltoxians murmured. He was tall, with slick, amphibious skin that glistened under the wreckage's dim light. His three eyes blinked in unison, wide with fear. A death world? Of course. It couldn't just be a normal, barren planet, could it? No, we had to crash on a world so hostile that it earned a place on the galactic index as a no-go zone. Planets like this were avoided for good reason. Hostile ecosystems, deadly predators, extreme climates. Everything here was designed to kill. The distress beacon, another voice said. It was one of the Grivax. He was standing over a terminal, his scaled hand hovering above the broken interface. It's dead. No signals getting out. I felt the weight of that statement settle over us. No signal. No rescue. We were on our own. The Veltoxian clicked his tongue nervously. There are other ships in the sector. Surely someone will come. He didn't sound convinced, and neither was I. No sane species would touch this planet, not without a military escort or a massive financial incentive. Most of the Galactic Union would consider us already dead. We were expendable. But then, a thought cut through the rising panic in my mind. Not everyone saw things that way. Not every species avoided danger. I cleared my throat, my voice raspy from the smoke. There's one species that might come. The Veltoxian glanced at me. Who? I smirked. Humans. The Veltoxian scoffed. Humans? No one in their right mind would trust them. They're reckless, unpredictable. Exactly, I interrupted. That's why they're the only ones who'll take the risk. Humans thrive on death worlds. They live on one and they're crazy enough to come here." The Grivax folded his arms, his reptilian eyes narrowing. Even if they do come, we have no way to contact them. The distress beacons fried. I felt a knot tighten in my gut. He was right. No matter how tough humans were, we had no way of letting them know we needed help. We were stranded, and the planet was already starting to show its teeth. Suddenly, there was a sharp screech from the tree line a piercing, alien sound that sent chills down my spine. Something was out there, watching us, and it wasn't friendly. We need to secure the crash site, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. We're exposed out here. The Grivax snorted. And with what weapons? Everything was destroyed in the crash. We improvise, I replied. We'll use what we have, scavenge the wreckage. We're not helpless. But if we stay out in the open, whatever's out there will come for us." The Veltoxian's eyes darted nervously toward the darkening forest. What do you suggest? I surveyed the wreckage. The freighter was a lost cause, but there were still pieces we could use metal plating for shields, debris for barricades. We'd have to work fast. Start salvaging, I said. Anything that can be used for defense. We'll set up a perimeter and figure out the rest after. The others hesitated for a moment, but fear was a powerful motivator. 
Soon, they were moving through the wreckage, gathering what little they could. The Veltoxians and Ushrans were quick to organize, while the Grivax grumbled but followed orders. I knew we couldn't hold out forever. This planet would test us in ways none of us were prepared for. But if the humans had taught the galaxy anything, it was that survival was a matter of will as much as strength. Maybe, just maybe, we had a chance. The sun was setting when the first wave hit. We'd barely finished setting up our makeshift barricades when the creatures came. They were fast six-legged beasts covered in scales, with mouths full of needle-like teeth. They swarmed toward the crash site, their screeches echoing in the night. Here they come, the Grivax shouted. I grabbed a piece of metal plating, using it as a shield as the creatures slammed into our defenses. The aliens around me fought with whatever they had improvised weapons, sharp debris, their bare hands. But it was a losing battle. The creatures were too many, too fierce. Our barricades wouldn't hold for long. Fall back, I yelled, as one of the creatures broke through, knocking a Veltoxian to the ground. I rushed to help, stabbing the creature with a jagged piece of metal. It let out a high-pitched wail before collapsing. Suddenly, a deafening roar echoed through the air, and the creatures stopped in their tracks. For a moment, everything was still. Then, I saw it a massive, shadowy figure stepping out from the tree line. It was human. Get down, the figure shouted. I barely had time to react before the human opened fire. A pulse rifle in his hands unleashed a hail of energy blasts, cutting down the creatures with brutal efficiency. Within seconds, the remaining beasts were fleeing into the woods, leaving behind a battlefield of carnage. The human approached, his helmet reflecting the dim light of the fires around us. He surveyed the wreckage, his expression unreadable beneath the visor. You're lucky we found you, he said, his voice calm but commanding. This planet doesn't like visitors. The Veltoxian stumbled forward, still shaken. Who? Who are you? The human removed his helmet, revealing a rugged, battle-hardened face. His eyes were cold, calculating, but there was a flicker of something else, their determination, maybe even a hint of compassion. I'm Captain Holt, he said, his voice steady, and we're your rescue. I could barely believe it. The humans had come. They were here, and they were ready for war. But something about the way Captain Holt looked at the wreckage made me uneasy. There was more to this rescue than he was letting on, and I had a feeling we were about to find out. Captain Holt had that look the one you see in people who've been through hell and back, but learned how to survive it. He didn't say much, and when he did, his words were sharp, efficient. The kind of man who only spoke when there was something worth saying. His squad moved in behind him, a team of six humans, each clad in battle-worn armor that looked like it had seen a dozen death worlds. Secure the perimeter, Holt ordered, and his team fanned out with military precision. They moved like ghosts, silent, weapons drawn, their eyes scanning the tree line for threats. I stood frozen, still processing the fact that the humans had actually come. The Veltoxian beside me shifted uncomfortably, his amphibious skin pale with fear. There, quite efficient, he muttered under his breath, his distrust evident. Efficient was one way to describe them. Cold, calculating, and deadly might have been more accurate. But right now, we didn't have the luxury of choice. Holt approached me, his piercing gaze locking onto mine. You're the ranking officer? he asked. I hesitated. Technically, I wasn't. The ship had a captain, but he didn't survive the crash. I was just part of the security detail, but with everyone else either dead or injured, I seem to be the one in charge now. I suppose I am, I said, wiping dirt from my brow. What's the plan? Holt glanced at the wreckage. This planet isn't going to let us stay here. We're sitting ducks in the open like this. We need to move. Move? The Grivax officer scoffed, stepping forward with a sneer on his reptilian face. We barely survived the first wave of predators. You think we'll make it through this jungle without being torn apart? Holt didn't flinch. If you stay here, you'll die. The creatures that attacked you were just scouts. The bigger ones will come once night falls. Bigger ones, 
I swallowed hard, my eyes darting to the tree line. The dense, alien forest loomed in the distance, a twisted mass of towering trees and creeping shadows. It was bad enough fighting off those six-legged beasts, what kind of nightmare creatures were still out there, waiting for darkness. We don't have a choice, Holt continued. We're headed for high ground. There's an old mining outpost about twelve clicks north. It'll give us shelter for the night and buy us some time. I could hear the Veltoxian sucking in a sharp breath. A mining outpost? On this planet, why would anyone set up shop here? Holt's jaw tightened. That's classified. Classified, right? Of course it was. The Galactic Union always had a way of burying things they didn't want anyone to know about, especially on planets like this. Still, something about Holt's demeanor made me uneasy. He was hiding more than just a location. Look, I said, trying to keep my voice steady, we appreciate the rescue, but you can't just expect us to march into the jungle without knowing what we're up against. There are wounded, and not all of us are built for combat. Holt's expression softened, if only slightly. You don't have to fight, you just have to survive. Stick close to my team, and we'll get you through this. The Grivax officer snorted, and if we don't want to follow your lead, Holt stared him down, his voice dropping to a lethal whisper. Then you can stay behind, but when the second wave hits, don't expect us to come back for you. The tension was thick enough to cut with a knife. I could feel the unease in the air, the distrust simmering just below the surface. The Veltoxians and Grivax didn't like humans. They saw them as reckless brutes, and maybe they weren't entirely wrong. But right now, Holt and his team were the only things standing between us and whatever nightmares roamed this death world. Fine, I said, stepping in before the situation could escalate. We'll go with you. But we need to move fast. Some of us are injured, and we'll need supplies. Holt nodded, already turning to his team. We've got med packs. My men will help with the wounded. You have ten minutes to gather what you can from the wreckage. After that, we're moving out. Ten minutes. It wasn't much, but it was better than nothing. I quickly relayed the orders to the others, and soon we were scouring the freighter for anything that could be useful medical supplies, food, water, even scraps of metal we could use as weapons. It was a frantic scramble, but we couldn't afford to waste time. The sun was sinking lower on the horizon, casting long shadows over the wreckage. As I moved through the debris, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Holt and his team had shown up out of nowhere, armed to the teeth and ready for battle. In that mining outpost, I'd never heard of any legitimate operation being set up on a death world, let alone one as dangerous as this. But before I could dwell on it, one of the human soldiers called out, We've got company. I spun around, my heart racing. A dark shape was moving through the trees, a hulking figure nearly twice the size of the creatures we'd faced earlier. Its eyes glowed with a predatory gleam, and it let out a deep, guttural growl that sent a shiver down my spine. Holt didn't waste a second. On me, he barked, his team already falling into formation. Pulse rifles hummed to life, and I watched as the humans moved with flawless precision, setting up a defensive line between us and the approaching beast. The Grivax officer's face paled. We can't fight that thing, it's too big. Holt didn't flinch. Watch us. The creature charged, its massive claws tearing through the underbrush like paper. I barely had time to react before the humans opened fire, their rifles lighting up the jungle with rapid bursts of energy. The creature roared, staggering under the assault, but it kept coming, its thick hide absorbing most of the damage. Holt's voice was calm, even in the chaos. Aim for the joints. It's armored everywhere else. His soldiers adjusted their aim, targeting the creature's knees and shoulders with pinpoint accuracy. I watched in awe as the beast stumbled, its legs buckling under the concentrated fire. It crashed to the ground with a thunderous boom, thrashing wildly as it tried to regain its footing. Now, Holt shouted, move. We didn't need to be told twice. The aliens and I scrambled to follow the humans, leaving the wreckage behind as we sprinted into the jungle. The creature was still thrashing behind us, 
but it wouldn't stay down for long. We had to put as much distance between us and it as possible. The jungle swallowed us whole, the thick canopy overhead blocking out the last of the fading sunlight. I could hear strange sounds all around us chirps, growls, rustling in the underbrush. This place was alive in the worst possible way. Stay close, Holt muttered as we pushed deeper into the jungle. This is just the beginning. I glanced at him, my heart pounding in my chest. What do you mean? He didn't look at me, his eyes scanning the darkened trees ahead. You think this planet's dangerous now? You haven't seen anything yet. There it was again, that cryptic edge to his words. Holt knew more than he was letting on, and I had a feeling we were about to find out just how much. Nightfall on this planet was something else entirely. The air grew colder, thick with moisture, and the jungle seemed to come alive in ways I wasn't prepared for. Alien shrieks echoed from the shadows, the rustle of unseen creatures moving through the dense underbrush constantly setting my nerves on edge. Every sound felt like a threat, every shadow an enemy. We marched in a tight formation, with Holt squad at the front and rear, keeping the rest of us sandwiched between them. It was supposed to be comforting, but instead, it just hammered home how helpless we were out here. The humans, by contrast, moved through the jungle like they belonged in it swift, silent, and deadly. They didn't flinch at the noises, didn't react to the movement in the dark. They weren't just rescuers, they were predators in their own right. Keep moving, Holt said from the front, his voice low but steady. His helmet visor glowed faintly in the dim light, casting a ghostly reflection on the foliage. Beside me, one of the Voltoxians, Merck, was struggling to keep up. His gills flared with each labored breath, his amphibious body clearly not suited for the harsh terrain. I reached out to steady him as he stumbled over a root. You all right? I asked. He nodded weakly. I'll manage. Just never been in a place like this. None of us have, I muttered, though that wasn't exactly true. The humans clearly had experience on worlds like this. It showed in the way they moved, the way they barely reacted to the dangers around us. I couldn't decide if that was a good thing, or if it should terrify me even more. Suddenly, the human at the rear, Sergeant Vance, signaled for us to halt. Everyone froze, silent and alert. What is it? I whispered, but Vance raised a hand to shush me. The jungle was eerily quiet now, the cacophony of alien sounds replaced by an oppressive stillness. My skin prickled with unease. Something was wrong. Holt approached from the front, his expression grim. We've got movement on the ridge, up ahead. I strained to see through the thick foliage, but all I could make out were shadows in the gloom. My heart raced. The ridge Holt referred to was barely visible, a sharp rise in the terrain that loomed ahead of us like the back of a giant, sleeping beast. Whatever was up there, it was watching us. Predators, I asked, keeping my voice low. Holt gave a slight nod. Bigger ones. My blood ran cold. The creature we'd faced at the wreckage had been bad enough. If there were larger predators on this planet, we were in serious trouble. Can we avoid them? Merck asked, his voice quivering. Not likely, Holt replied. They've already scented us. The Voltoxian looked like he was about to pass out. The Grivax officer, who had kept a smug distance from the humans since we left the wreckage, suddenly didn't seem so confident anymore. Your plan was to lead us straight into more danger, he growled, his scaled face tightening with anger. Holt didn't bother responding. Instead, he turned to Vance. Take Johnson and flank right. I'll lead the rest straight up the ridge. If it's an ambush, we'll need to divide their attention. Johnson, another one of Holt's squad members, nodded grimly. He and Vance slipped off into the underbrush without another word. It was uncanny how easily they vanished, blending into the shadows like ghosts. I envied their ability to disappear like that. You're going up the ridge? I asked, trying to hide the panic in my voice. Holt looked at me, his expression unreadable behind his visor. It's either that, or we wait for them to come to us. And trust me, you don't want that. The Grivax officer sneered. This is madness. We should hold our ground, 
not walk right into their territory. Holt's eyes narrowed. Holding our ground is a death sentence. These things are pack hunters. If we stay here, we'll be surrounded. Our only chance is to break through their line before they can trap us. The Grivax hissed in frustration, but he didn't argue further. He knew, just like the rest of us, that Holt was right. I tightened my grip on the crude weapon I'd fashioned from a piece of debris. It wasn't much a jagged metal shard attached to a length of twisted wire, but it was better than nothing. The other survivors were similarly armed, though none of us had anything close to the firepower the humans carried. Stay close to my team, Holt said, giving us one last look before turning back toward the ridge. And no heroics. We're getting through this together. Together, right? I tried to swallow the knot of fear in my throat as we followed Holt up the ridge, each step feeling heavier than the last. The incline was steep and the vegetation thick, but we pushed through, our senses on high alert. My ears strained to catch any sound, any indication of movement in the shadows. Then I heard it. A low, guttural growl, so deep it seemed to vibrate through the ground itself. Contact, one of Holt's soldiers shouted, and suddenly all hell broke loose. The jungle erupted in chaos as the predators struck. They moved fast, too fast, blurring shadows of muscle and claws. Holt's team opened fire, their pulse rifles cutting through the darkness with searing bursts of energy. The creatures roared in fury, their massive bodies crashing through the underbrush as they charged. I barely had time to react before one of the beasts lunged at me, its jaws snapping shut inches from my face. I stumbled back, raising my makeshift weapon in a desperate attempt to fend it off. But the creature was enormous at least eight feet tall, with sleek, obsidian black skin and razor-sharp claws. Before it could strike again, Holt was there, his rifle blazing. The creature howled as a burst of energy hit it square in the chest, sending it sprawling to the ground. But more were coming dozens of them, their glowing eyes flickering in the dark. We're being overrun, the Grivax officer shouted panic overtaking him as he swung wildly at the approaching creatures. His strikes were clumsy, ineffective. Holt's voice cut through the chaos. Stay together, focus fire on the big ones. The humans were a blur of motion, their disciplined tactics holding the line as the rest of us fought just to stay alive. I swung my makeshift weapon with all my strength, managing to land a lucky blow on one of the smaller predators. It recoiled, hissing. But before I could press the attack, another lunged from the side, knocking me to the ground. My vision swam as I struggled to breathe, the weight of the creature pressing down on me. Its fangs were inches from my throat, hot breath searing my skin. I was going to die here, on this forsaken planet, surrounded by monsters. But then, in a blur of movement, Holt was there. He yanked the creature off me, slamming his knife into its side with brutal efficiency. It screeched in pain, writhing on the ground as its lifeblood poured out onto the dirt. You good? Holt asked, pulling me to my feet with surprising gentleness. I nodded, too shaken to speak. My heart was pounding, adrenaline surging through my veins as I took in the battlefield around us. The humans were holding their own, but the predators weren't letting up. For every one we took down, two more seemed to take its place. Holt wiped blood from his blade his eyes scanning the tree line. We need to move. We're sitting ducks here. But the ridge, I began, but Holt cut me off. They're funneling us into a kill zone. We need to outflank them. The words barely registered before another roar pierced the night, louder and more menacing than any before. A hulking shape emerged from the shadows larger than any of the predators we'd faced so far. Its massive frame was covered in thick, spiked armor, and its eyes glowed with an eerie, unnatural light. My heart sank. This wasn't just a predator. This was their alpha. The alpha towered over us, its bulk rippling with raw muscle beneath that spiked, armored hide. It moved with terrifying grace for something its size, each step deliberate, purposeful. The ground shook beneath its feet, and the lesser predators seemed to fall back, almost in deference, circling us in the shadows while the Alpha advanced. For a second, no one moved. 
it was as if time itself had frozen, locking us in place as the hulking creature's gaze swept over the group. Its eyes, those glowing, cold orbs landed on Holt, and I saw something flicker there. Recognition. Challenge. Holt stood his ground, pulse rifle aimed squarely at the Alpha. Don't break formation, he barked, his voice sharp, cutting through the fear that gripped the rest of us. The Grivax officer, already panicked, was the first to lose his nerve. He fired wildly at the Alpha, each shot ricocheting harmlessly off its armored hide. The creature didn't even flinch. Instead, it turned its full attention to him. With an ear-splitting roar, the Alpha charged. The Grivax's eyes widened in horror. He tried to retreat, but his foot caught on a root, sending him sprawling. The Alpha was on him in an instant, its massive jaws closing around the officer's torso. A sickening crunch echoed through the jungle as the Grivax's armor crumpled like paper, his screams cut short in a grisly display of violence. I froze, the horror of the moment paralyzing me. This thing, this monster, was unstoppable. I wasn't ready to die like this, on some forgotten planet, torn apart by beasts that were supposed to be nothing more than a footnote in our mission. Focus fire. Holt's shout snapped me out of my stupor. Now. The humans reacted with flawless precision. Holt's team unleashed a barrage of coordinated firepower, their pulse rifles trained on the Alpha's unarmored joints and vulnerable spots. The air lit up with a staccato burst of energy rounds, each shot driving the creature back, if only by inches. But it wasn't enough. The Alpha shrugged off the hits like they were nothing, its thick hide absorbing most of the damage. It roared again, shaking the jungle around us, and then charged at Holt. This time, Holt didn't wait for it to reach him. With a quick motion, he activated a grenade on his belt and lobbed it directly at the creature's feet. The explosion sent a shockwave through the clearing, throwing dirt, rocks, and debris into the air. The Alpha staggered, its roar now tinged with pain. That was the opening we needed. Vance appeared from the side, a rocket launcher hoisted onto his shoulder. In one fluid motion, he fired. The rocket streaked through the air, slamming into the Alpha's exposed side with a thunderous impact. This time, the creature stumbled, its massive body finally showing signs of real damage. Keep hitting it, Holt ordered, not wasting the opportunity. The rest of the humans poured their fire into the wounded Alpha, their shots more precise now, aimed at the cracks in its armored hide. The creature's movements grew sluggish its once terrifying speed now hampered by the damage it had sustained. But the Alpha wasn't done yet. With a final, enraged roar, it lashed out, its massive claws swiping at the nearest human Private Johnson. The blow landed with brutal force, sending Johnson flying into a nearby tree with a sickening crunch. He didn't get back up. Johnson's down, Vance yelled, fury in his voice. Holt didn't hesitate. He sprinted toward the Alpha, ducking under its swipe, and plunged his knife into one of the creature's exposed wounds. The Alpha howled in pain, thrashing wildly, but Holt held on, twisting the blade deeper. The creature's blood, thick and dark, poured over him, but he didn't falter. Come on, Holt growled through gritted teeth, driving the knife in further, deeper. The Alpha's movement slowed, its massive body shuddering as the fight drained out of it, with one final, ragged breath, the creature collapsed to the ground, its massive form crashing down with enough force to send a tremor through the jungle floor. For a moment, there was nothing but the sound of labored breathing. We all stood there, frozen, staring at the fallen Alpha. Holt pulled his knife from the creature's corpse, blood dripping from the blade as he wiped it clean on his sleeve. His face, streaked with sweat and grime, was a mask of exhaustion. Is, is it over? Merck stammered, his voice trembling. Holt didn't answer right away. He scanned the tree line, pulse rifles still at the ready. The lesser predators had retreated into the shadows, their alpha dead, and for the first time since the attack started, the jungle felt still. Yeah, Holt finally said, his voice rough. It's over. I let out a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding, my legs shaking with a mixture of exhaustion and adrenaline. The battle was over, but the cost had been high. Johnson was down, 
possibly dead, and several others were injured. The Grivax officer, who had been so full of bravado, was nothing more than a mangled corpse. We need to keep moving, Vance said, his voice tight with anger. Johnson's hurt bad. If we don't get him to the extraction point, he's not going to make it. Holt nodded, already moving toward Johnson's limp form. The private's chest rose and fell shallowly, his breathing ragged, but he was alive. Barely. Can you walk? Holt asked, crouching beside him. Johnson grunted, pain etched into every line of his face. I'll manage. Holt helped him to his feet, supporting his weight as we resumed our trek through the jungle. The rest of us fell in behind them, our spirits dampened by the losses but driven forward by necessity. We're close, Holt said after a few minutes of silence. The extraction points just over the next ridge. I could see the exhaustion in his movements now, the toll the battle had taken on him and his team. But there was no room for weakness out here, not on this planet. As we crested the ridge, the jungle gave way to a rocky plateau, the vast expanse of sky stretching out before us, and there, on the horizon, was our salvation. The shuttle. It was perched on the edge of a clearing, its engines idling, waiting for us. Relief washed over me at the sight of it, a feeling I hadn't allowed myself to hope for until this moment. We made it, Merck breathed, disbelief in his voice. But something was wrong. Holt's expression hadn't changed. He was still tense, eyes scanning the area as if expecting another ambush. Stay alert, he said, his voice low. We're not out of this yet. That's when I saw them. Figures silhouetted against the fading light, standing between us and the shuttle. They weren't human. They weren't the predators we'd been fighting, either. They were something else entirely. The figures blocking our path were taller than humans, their elongated forms draped in dark, flowing armor that shimmered unnaturally in the fading light. They stood perfectly still, their long, thin limbs bent at unsettling angles, and their faces were obscured beneath featureless helmets. Yet, it wasn't their appearance that filled me with dread. It was the way they seemed to absorb the very atmosphere around them, like a void sucking the warmth and light from the air. Vance cursed under his breath. What the hell are those? Holt raised his pulse rifle slowly, his eyes narrowing as he studied the creatures. No idea, but they're between us and that shuttle. The figures hadn't moved yet but there was an ominous sense that they were merely waiting for us to make the first mistake. What do we do? Merck asked, his voice shaking. We can't fight them, not after what we've just been through. He was right. We were running on fumes. Johnson could barely stand, and the rest of us were battered and exhausted from the fight with the predators. And now this? Holt, however, wasn't rattled. He straightened, his rifle held steady. We get to that shuttle, he said, voice calm but firm. No matter what they are, no matter what it takes, we're getting off this rock. The figures still didn't move, but something was happening. The air around them shimmered, distorting as if reality itself was bending in their presence. I could feel my skin prickling, a cold sweat forming on the back of my neck. Holt motioned for us to spread out, keeping low. Don't fire unless they make the first move he ordered. Let's see if we can get around them. We moved cautiously, fanning out in a wide arc, hoping to flank the strange figures without drawing their attention. My heart pounded in my chest, every step a battle against the fear gnawing at my insides. Holt led the way, his eyes never leaving the creatures. For a moment, it seemed like it might work. We were halfway to the shuttle, inching closer to our escape, when the lead figure suddenly raised its arm. A sound like tearing metal echoed through the air, and the ground beneath our feet trembled. Holt reacted instantly. Down, he shouted, diving for cover behind a large boulder. I hit the dirt just as a blast of energy surged past, crackling with an eerie, unnatural light. It scorched the ground where I'd been standing moments before, leaving behind a smoking, blackened crater. They're hostile, Vance yelled, already firing his rifle. The battlefield erupted into chaos. Energy bolts filled the air, 
the figures unleashing strange, arcane blasts that twisted and bent reality around them. The very fabric of space seemed to ripple in their wake, warping the world with every shot. I returned fire, my pulse rifle bucking against my shoulder. The energy blasts from our weapons hit the figures, but instead of being torn apart or crumpling like the beasts we'd fought before, their bodies flickered phasing in and out of existence, as if they weren't entirely solid. We're not doing enough damage, Merck shouted over the din, panic creeping into his voice. Holt gritted his teeth, ducking as another blast narrowly missed him. Keep firing, aim for their cores, whatever those are. We adjusted our aim, focusing on the center of the figure's torsos. And slowly, painfully, it began to work. One of the figures flickered violently, its shimmering form destabilizing before collapsing into a heap of black, crumbling dust. But for every one we managed to take down, two more seemed to appear, stepping out of the shadows as if they'd been there all along, watching us. They just keep coming, Vance growled, reloading his weapon. We'll never make it at this rate. Johnson, still slumped against a rock, groaned in pain, his face pale. We can't stay here much longer. Holt's gaze flicked to the shuttle, still so close yet feeling impossibly far. We're not dying here, he muttered under his breath. Then, louder, Vance, with me, Merck, lay down covering fire. Without waiting for a response, Holt and Vance broke from cover, sprinting toward the shuttle with everything they had left. Merck and I fired desperately, trying to keep the figures at bay, but they were closing in fast, their strange movements almost impossible to track. Holt reached the shuttle first, slamming his hand against the panel on the side. The hatch hissed open, and he waved us over. Get inside, now. I didn't need to be told twice. I bolted toward the shuttle, nearly slipping in the dirt as I skidded past Holt and into the cramped interior. Vance dragged Johnson in after me, his face tight with strain as he hefted the injured man's weight. Come on, Merck, Holt called, covering our retreat with a barrage of fire. But Merck wasn't moving. I turned, my heart sinking. Merck was still out there, pinned down behind a rock, his face pale with fear as the figures closed in around him. I'm stuck, he shouted. I can't. One of the figures raised its arm, and a blast of energy streaked toward him. Merck tried to dive out of the way, but he wasn't fast enough. The blast hit him square in the chest, and he crumpled to the ground, his body spasming as the energy ripped through him. Merck, Vance yelled, his voice raw with grief. Holt didn't hesitate. He grabbed Vance by the shoulder and shoved him into the shuttle. We can't help him. We have to go. Vance resisted for a second, his eyes locked on Merck's still form. But the cold logic of Holt's words broke through. With a growl of frustration, he slammed his fist against the wall and moved to the cockpit. The shuttle's engines roared to life as Holt sealed the hatch. The remaining figures outside surged toward us, but they were too late. The shuttle lifted off the ground, rising above the jungle as the figures disappeared into the undergrowth. For a moment, the silence inside the shuttle was deafening. The weight of everything that had happened pressed down on us, the grief, the exhaustion, the relief of survival. Holt slumped into one of the seats, his face drawn with fatigue. We did it, he muttered, more to himself than anyone else. But Vance wasn't so quick to celebrate. What the hell were those things, he asked, his voice still trembling with anger and loss. They weren't part of the local fauna. They were something else. Holt shook his head, his eyes dark. I don't know, but whatever they were, they weren't expecting us. I nodded slowly, the reality of it all sinking in. Deathworlders, they underestimated us. Vance snorted, though there was no humor in it. Let's hope we never have to find out who sent them. Holt didn't reply. He just stared out the shuttle's viewport as we left the cursed planet behind, his expression hardening. In the silence that followed, I couldn't help but think that, for once, maybe it wasn't just us who were the monsters. The shuttle soared above the twisted landscape of the jungle, its engines humming with a steady rhythm. Inside, the atmosphere was thick with tension, 
The weight of Merck's loss hung over us like a shroud, but there was no time for mourning. We were still far from safe. Status report, Holt's voice cut through the silence, his command as sharp as ever. Vance leaned over the cockpit controls, his hands moving deftly across the console. Engines are stable, fuel's low, but we should have enough to reach the extraction point if we don't hit any more surprises. Holt nodded, though his gaze remained fixed on the viewport, scanning the horizon for any sign of danger. The jungle below us stretched on for miles, an endless sea of dark, hostile wilderness. Somewhere down there, the predators we had fought and the mysterious figures we had barely escaped from were still lurking. Johnson, barely conscious, groaned from his seat, his face twisted in pain. The blast from earlier had taken a toll on him, and his breathing was shallow. I moved to his side, checking the rudimentary bandages we'd wrapped around his wounds. They weren't good enough, not by a long shot. He's not going to last much longer without proper medical attention, I said quietly. Holt's jaw tightened, but he didn't look back. We'll get him to the extraction point. He'll make it. Vance glanced over his shoulder, assuming nothing else decides to try and kill us before then. The tension in the shuttle was palpable. Every one of us knew that this mission had gone south in ways none of us could have predicted. And yet, we had survived against all odds, against creatures that had clearly been meant to ensure we didn't. I slumped into one of the seats, my rifle resting across my lap. My muscles ached, and every breath felt heavy. It was as though the adrenaline that had kept me going was finally draining away, leaving behind exhaustion and a creeping sense of dread. We need to figure out what those things were, Vance said, breaking the silence. They weren't natural. They weren't part of this ecosystem. Someone or something sent them. Holt didn't answer right away. He was still staring out the viewport, his eyes tracking something in the distance. We'll worry about that once we're out of here, he finally said. Right now, our priority is getting to the extraction point. Vance wasn't satisfied with that. Holt, those things were designed to kill us. You saw how they moved, how they bent reality. That's not some primitive alien species. That's advanced tech. Who the hell could have sent them? I glanced at Holt, waiting for his response. He was always the one with the answers, the one who could make sense of the chaos around us. But this time, he looked just as lost as the rest of us. I don't know, Holt said, his voice low. But whoever it was, they underestimated us. That was the second time he'd said that. And while there was a grim satisfaction in knowing that we had survived where others might not have, it did little to ease the knot of fear in my gut. Whoever had sent those creatures, whatever their purpose, we had just made ourselves their target. The shuttle shuddered slightly as we hit some turbulence, and Holt's attention snapped back to the controls. We're approaching the extraction point, he announced. Keep your eyes open. This might not be over yet. I moved to the cockpit peering out at the landscape below. The extraction point was a small clearing at the edge of the jungle, marked by a barely visible landing beacon. It looked desolate, the kind of place where you'd expect more trouble to be waiting. Any sign of our transport? I asked, my voice tight with anticipation. Not yet, Vance replied, scanning the sensors. But the beacon's still transmitting. They should be on their way. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. The whole mission had been one disaster after another, and the idea of a clean getaway felt almost too good to be true. As we descended toward the clearing, the shuttle's sensors pinged with a soft chime. Vance frowned, his fingers flying across the console. Hold up, I'm picking up something. Holt's eyes narrowed. What is it? Vance's expression darkened as he stared at the readouts. Multiple life forms, closing fast. More predators? I asked, my heart sinking. Vance shook his head, his voice grim. No, it's the same as before. Those figures, they're back. I swore under my breath, gripping my rifle tighter. Holt's jaw clenched, but his voice remained steady. We land, we hold them off until the transport arrives. No one gets left behind this time. The shuttle touched down with a thud, and we scrambled out, weapons at the ready. 
The clearing was eerily quiet, the jungle around us thick with shadows. The figures were out there, somewhere, closing in on us with their unnatural speed. Positions, Holt barked, and we moved into a defensive formation, backs to the shuttle. The first figure appeared from the trees, moving with that same unsettling grace, its form flickering in and out of focus, then another, and another. There were more of them, this time dozens, maybe even hundreds, surrounding us on all sides. Stay sharp, Holt warned. They're not invincible. Aim for their cores. The air grew heavy, and I felt that familiar, stomach-churning sensation as the reality around us began to distort. The figures raised their arms in unison, and I braced myself for the onslaught. Then, without warning, the air was filled with the deafening roar of engines. A massive dropship descended from above, its hull bristling with weaponry. As it neared the ground, its side hatches opened, and a barrage of heavy artillery erupted from its mounted cannons, tearing into the figures with brutal efficiency. The figures faltered, their bodies flickering and distorting under the assault. Some were torn apart by the firepower, disintegrating into clouds of black dust, while others simply vanished, retreating back into the jungle. Get to the dropship, Holt shouted, waving us forward. We didn't hesitate. With the figures in disarray, we sprinted across the clearing, making a mad dash for the safety of the dropship. Johnson was barely able to move, and Vance and I had to support him between us as we ran. The dropship's rear ramp lowered, and we scrambled aboard, panting and exhausted but alive. As soon as we were inside, the ramp closed behind us, and the ship lifted off, leaving the cursed jungle far below. Holt collapsed into one of the seats, his rifle still clutched tightly in his hands. Vance dropped into the seat beside him, his face a mixture of relief and disbelief. That was too close, Vance muttered, wiping sweat from his brow. I nodded in agreement, my heart still racing. We had made it. Barely. Holt leaned back, closing his eyes for a moment. Then he opened them and glanced around at the rest of us. Debrief in an hour, he said his voice heavy with exhaustion. We need answers, and I have a feeling we're not going to like them. As the dropship roared toward orbit, I couldn't help but wonder what kind of forces we had just tangled with. Whatever they were, they hadn't expected us to survive. But we had, because we were human. And on death worlds like Earth, survival wasn't just an instinct, it was a way of life. The dropship thrummed with the steady hum of its engines as it ascended into the upper atmosphere. Inside, the adrenaline from our escape still lingered, but exhaustion was quickly settling in. The soft, rhythmic vibration of the hull under my boots offered a strange comfort, as if the ship itself was trying to remind us that we were finally safe at least for now. Holt hadn't said a word since we'd boarded. He just sat there, staring blankly at the floor his rifle still clutched in his hands. The weight of command rested heavy on his shoulders, and for the first time since we'd started this mission, I saw the cracks in his armor. Merck's death had hit him harder than any of us. Vance, on the other hand, was pacing back and forth, his nerves still wired. Who the hell were those things, he muttered under his breath, his eyes darting toward the rear ramp as if expecting it to burst open at any second. They just vanished, like they weren't even real. They were real enough, I said, checking my rifle's charge for the hundredth time. Real enough to kill Merck. Johnson, slumped in his seat, grimaced in pain. His breathing was shallow, each inhale a struggle. The medkit had only done so much, and his injuries were severe. He wasn't going to last long without proper medical treatment. I could see the blood seeping through the bandages, and it was all I could do to keep the growing sense of dread at bay. Extraction points a bust, Holt finally said, his voice hoarse. We'll need to find another way off this rock. Vance stopped pacing. Another way? We barely made it out of there alive. What if those things show up again? They will, Holt replied, his eyes hard. And we need to be ready. I frowned, glancing at the others. What's the plan? We were supposed to link up with the fleet, but if the extraction points compromised... We're on our own, Holt said flatly. 
The fleet's been ordered to leave orbit. Too many unknown hostiles. Commands pulling back. Vance swore under his breath. So they're just leaving us here, after everything? Holt didn't respond, but his silence was all the answer we needed. Command had written us off. We were stranded. They must have a contingency plan, I said, trying to think through the options. A fallback point, something. Holt shook his head. Fallback point was the extraction zone. That's gone. If we're going to survive, we'll have to make contact with any surviving assets planet side. I didn't like the sound of that. You think anyone else is left? There were other teams deployed, Holt said, his gaze distant. Some of them might still be out there. We're not the only ones they abandoned. For a moment, no one spoke. The reality of our situation was sinking in, and it was grim. Stranded on a hostile planet, cut off from command, with unknown forces hunting us. It wasn't a death sentence, not yet, but it was close. Vance finally broke the silence. What about those things? They weren't just wild animals. You saw how they moved, like they were coordinated. And that distortion field, there's no way that was natural. I nodded. Someone or something is controlling them. We're dealing with tech way beyond anything we've encountered. And they wanted us dead, Vance added bitterly. Why? I don't know, Holt said quietly, but we're going to find out. Before anyone could respond, the ship's comm system crackled to life. A voice, distorted but unmistakably human, came through the static. This is Recon Team Delta. Any survivors, respond. Holt shot to his feet, his hand flying to the comm panel. This is Captain Holt of Bravo Team. We read you, Delta. What's your status? The voice on the other end hesitated for a moment, then responded. We're pinned down at an abandoned outpost, five clicks east of your position. Hostels are everywhere. We've lost half our team. Need immediate assistance. Vance exchanged a grim look with me. Pinned down? Sounds like they've run into the same nightmare we did. Holt didn't waste time. We're en route. Hold tight, Delta. We'll get you out of there. The voice crackled again, weaker this time. We're not sure how much longer we can hold. The line went dead. Holt cursed under his breath, then turned to us. Looks like we've got our next objective. Gear up. I didn't need to be told twice. The jungle might have been a death trap, but we weren't going to leave anyone behind. Not if there was still a chance to save them. We prepped quickly. Johnson, though weak, insisted on coming with us. His injuries were severe, but he wasn't about to be left behind. Holt argued, but Johnson's stubbornness won out in the end. We fashioned a makeshift stretcher out of what supplies we had, and with Vance and I taking turns to carry him, we set out into the jungle once more. The atmosphere outside was even more oppressive than before. The dense canopy above blocked out most of the sunlight, casting the landscape in a dim, otherworldly glow. The air was thick with moisture, and every sound seemed amplified the rustling of leaves, the distant calls of alien creatures, the crunch of our boots on the underbrush. We moved in silence, the weight of the mission pressing down on us. Every shadow seemed to hide a threat, every flicker of movement sending a jolt of tension through my body. What do you think's waiting for us at the outpost? I asked, breaking the silence. Holt didn't look back. Could be anything. Could be nothing. But Delta's holding out for a reason, and we're going to find out what. Vance, trudging beside me, muttered, I just hope we're not walking into another trap. The jungle felt alive around us, its oppressive presence a constant reminder that we were deep in enemy territory. Whatever those figures were, whatever force had sent them, they had made this planet their hunting ground, and we were the prey. We reached the outpost just as the last light of the day was fading. It was a crumbling structure, overgrown with vines and half buried by the jungle's relentless advance. The perimeter had been hastily fortified with what little remained of Delta's defenses, makeshift barricades, and overturned crates that offered little more than a momentary respite from whatever was hunting them. The moment we crossed the threshold, a hail of gunfire erupted from within the outpost. Hold your fire! 
Holt shouted, raising his weapon. Bravo team, here to assist. There was a moment of tense silence. Then a figure emerged from behind one of the barricades. He was erect dirty, bleeding, and barely able to stand. His eyes, wild with fear, locked onto us as if we were ghosts. You came, he rasped, his voice hoarse. I thought, I thought we were done for. Holt moved forward, gripping the man by the shoulders. How many of you are left? The man, his face pale and gaunt, shook his head slowly. Just me and Cooper. The others, the others didn't make it. As if on cue, another figure limped into view Cooper, a young soldier who looked like he hadn't slept in days. His hands trembled as he held his rifle, and the hollow look in his eyes told me everything I needed to know. They're out there, Cooper whispered, his voice shaking. They're coming back for us. Before we could respond, a low, rumbling sound echoed through the jungle, growing louder with each passing second. The ground trembled beneath our feet, and the air grew thick with a palpable sense of dread. They've found us, Holt said, his voice low. And then, from the shadows of the jungle, they came. The figures emerged from the underbrush, their shapes cloaked in the shadows of the dense foliage. They moved with a fluidity that was both mesmerizing and terrifying, their forms shimmering with the same distortion that had engulfed Merck. It was as if they were part of the jungle itself, twisting reality around them, blending seamlessly into their surroundings. Fall back, Holt shouted, shoving Cooper and the other survivor behind the barricades as we all scrambled for cover. I pressed myself against the rough-hewn wall, my heart pounding as the distortion began to pulse and swirl around them, warping the very air. It was unnerving, the way they flowed, almost like water a reminder that these beings were not just predators, they were something else entirely. The first shot rang out, a crack of energy that pierced the tension, and the alien beings jerked as if struck. A pulse of bright light emanated from their forms, sending ripples through the air, and I watched as they regrouped, their movements eerily coordinated, as if they shared a single mind. Do they even feel pain? Vance shouted, firing off a few shots in quick succession. The blast illuminated the jungle for a fleeting moment, revealing the hideous, angular faces of the creatures, their eyes glowing with a malevolent intelligence. I don't know, I yelled back, trying to steady my aim. But we have to slow them down. We need to give Delta a chance to regroup. Holt turned to us, determination etched on his face. Focus fire on one. We can't let them split us up. As if reading his thoughts, the creatures split into two groups, flanking us. It was an attempt to cut off our escape. I felt a chill crawl up my spine, realizing they were not just attacking, they were hunting. I aimed at the nearest one, taking a breath to steady my nerves. My pulse raced, and I could hear the gunfire ringing out around me, the cacophony of our weapons blending with the alien growls. I squeezed the trigger, the energy beam cutting through the darkness. It struck the creature square in the chest, sending it stumbling back, its distortion flickering. Got one, I shouted, my heart racing with a rush of adrenaline. But my victory was short-lived. The creature quickly regained its composure and moved back into the fray, undeterred. Keep firing, Holt shouted, his voice fierce. We can't let them overwhelm us. The creatures closed in, weaving between the barricades with unnatural grace. They were like phantoms, disappearing into the jungle only to reappear just out of reach. My hands were shaking. Each shot fired a desperate attempt to fend off the inevitable. Vance, I shouted, trying to get his attention. We need to fall back to the command center. We can't hold this position. He nodded, fear and determination clashing in his eyes. Let's go, cover us. We formed a line, Holt taking point, while Vance and I ushered the survivors behind us. I could feel the pressure mounting as the creatures pressed closer, their glowing eyes fixated on us, their predatory instincts palpable. As we retreated, I caught sight of a flicker of movement to my left a shadow darting between the trees. My breath caught in my throat as I realized one of the creatures was trying to flank us. Left, I yelled, aiming my rifle in its direction. It was fast, too fast, but I fired anyway, 
the energy beam illuminating the underbrush for just a moment. It hit the ground beside it, sending up a spray of dirt and leaves, but the creature just flowed around the debris, undeterred. Push through, Holt shouted, his voice cutting through the chaos. We need to get to the command center. We sprinted toward the outpost inner sanctum, the sound of our boots thudding against the ground a stark contrast to the rustle of the jungle around us. I could feel the heat of the creature's presence just behind us, a palpable reminder that they were hunting us and we were on borrowed time. As we reached the heavy door of the command center, Holt slammed his palm against the control panel. The door hissed open, revealing the darkened interior. Inside, now. We poured into the command center, quickly shutting the door behind us. The heavy blast door sealed shut with a metallic thud, and for a moment there was silence. Is everyone okay? Holt asked, breathless, scanning the room. Cooper was clutching his rifle tightly, his eyes wide with fear. What now? They're going to find a way in. Holt's expression was grim. We need to regroup, assess our resources, and find a way to contact the fleet again. But first, we need to hold this position. As we spread out, I moved to the central console, desperately tapping at the controls. The systems flickered to life, casting a dim blue light across the room. I pulled up the schematics of the outpost, searching for anything that could give us an advantage. Damn it, I muttered under my breath. There's no long-range comms. We're cut off completely. Holt joined me at the console, his eyes narrowing as he scanned the data. What about the internal systems? Can we use them to set traps? Maybe, I said, flipping through the options. If we can get the defense drones online, we might have a chance. Do it, Holt ordered, his voice firm. We need to buy ourselves some time. If we can lure them in, we might be able to turn the tide. I worked quickly, fingers flying over the controls. The drones were ancient tech, but they still had a few tricks left. With any luck, we could use them to our advantage. As I activated the drone protocols, the room filled with a series of soft whirs and clicks. The drones began to power up, their mechanical limbs unfolding from their dormant states. I couldn't help but feel a flicker of hope this might just work. There, we have control, I said, my heart racing. But they won't last long against those things. We need to set the perimeter and prepare for their assault. Everyone, grab a weapon, Holt commanded, rallying the troops. We don't have time to waste. I glanced over at Johnson, still struggling to keep himself upright. You sure you want to fight? You're in no shape to. I'm not leaving you guys, he grunted, gritting his teeth. Not now. Not after everything. Holt gave him a curt nod of respect. Then let's make this count. With our makeshift team assembled, we prepared for the inevitable assault. The drones hovered in the air, scanning the perimeter, their sensors actively searching for any signs of movement. The tension in the room was electric, each of us braced for the storm that was about to hit. I could feel the weight of our situation pressing down on me, a reminder of how far we had come and what we stood to lose. Suddenly, a low growl echoed through the air, sending chills down my spine. The creatures were close. They're here, Vance whispered, gripping his rifle tightly. The drones buzzed to life, their targeting systems locking onto the approaching forms. The shadows shifted and twisted, the creatures moving in unison, an unholy dance of death. Hold your fire until I give the word, Holt commanded, his voice steady. We'll lure them in. The growling intensified, the creatures drawing nearer, their glowing eyes piercing through the darkness. I could feel the adrenaline coursing through my veins, a mixture of fear and determination driving me forward. We would not go quietly into that good night, not while we still had breath in our lungs. Now, Holt shouted, and I felt the room erupt in chaos as the drones sprang to life, firing their weapons into the darkness. The room erupted with the sound of whirring machinery and the crackle of energy weapons discharging. The drones unleashed a barrage of fire into the encroaching shadows, beams of bright light cutting through the darkness as they targeted the aliens. Each shot illuminated the jungle outside, 
revealing the grotesque forms of our pursuers for just a moment before they vanished back into the underbrush. Keep it steady, I yelled, urging the drones to maintain their focus. They were designed for precision, but the chaos outside was a constant threat to our safety. I could see the shapes of the aliens flickering in and out of sight, weaving through the trees like wraiths. More are coming, Vance shouted, his voice tinged with panic as he peered through the viewport. The creatures were regrouping, their shimmering forms becoming more defined, revealing a multitude of eyes glinting with malevolence. We need to seal the perimeter. Almost there, I muttered, fingers flying over the console. I was trying to access the automated defense systems that would allow us to fortify our position. Just a little longer. Suddenly, the alarms blared, a shrill warning that pierced through the tension. Red lights flashed across the console as the drones began to identify multiple targets. My stomach dropped as I realized the aliens were no longer trying to flank us, they were preparing to attack head-on. Everyone, brace yourselves, Holt shouted, his voice booming above the alarms. Get ready to fire on my mark. I barely had time to process the warning when the first alien burst through the foliage, moving impossibly fast. It lunged toward the command center, its form twisting and shifting as if it were made of liquid shadow. I fired instinctively, the energy beam striking it square in the chest, but the shot only seemed to infuriate it further. The alien screeched, a chilling sound that resonated through the air, and more followed. They charged toward us, their movements synchronized, a nightmare made flesh. The drones targeted them one by one, unleashing their firepower, but the creatures danced around the beams, their bodies a blur of motion. Hold your fire, Holt shouted again, frustration lacing his tone. We need to wait for the right moment. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, each beat echoing the urgency of our situation. The drones were holding their own, but I knew it wouldn't last long. The aliens were relentless, their predatory instincts driving them forward. Now, fire, Holt's voice cut through the chaos, and I squeezed the trigger, sending another energy beam toward the nearest creature. This time, the shot connected, and the alien staggered back, the distortion flickering around it. Focus on the ones that break through, Holt yelled, pointing to an alien that was making a beeline for the console. We can't let them inside. I aimed my rifle again, heart racing as I took in the sight of the creatures lunging toward us. One alien was only a few feet away, its maw opening wide to reveal rows of jagged teeth. I pulled the trigger, hitting it square in the chest. It let out a horrifying screech, but I didn't wait to see if it was down. There was no time. Keep moving. Don't let them get close, Vance shouted, firing off rounds as the drones continued their assault. The chaos unfolded around me in a whirlwind of noise and color. The drones flared with energy, firing beams into the depths of the jungle as the aliens pressed forward. I could see Holt and Vance moving as a well-oiled machine, taking turns firing at the approaching creatures, their teamwork a beacon of hope amidst the madness. But we were outnumbered. More incoming, Cooper shouted from behind me, panic rising in his voice. There's too many. Stay calm, I yelled back, my voice barely cutting through the cacophony. We can hold them off. We just need to. Suddenly, the command center shook as the first alien collided with the door. It slammed into the heavy metal with a deafening crash, the impact reverberating through the room. The drones turned their focus, firing at the creature as it writhed against the blast door. Hold it, Holt shouted, aiming his rifle at the door. We can't let them breach. I could see the distortions flickering around the alien as it tried to phase through the door, its movements erratic and wild. My pulse quickened as I realized that if they got through, it would be over. With every ounce of strength I had, I pushed the control panel for the automated defenses, my fingers trembling. I had to activate the emergency lockdown protocols. It was a last resort, but we had no other choice. Everyone, get back, I yelled my voice rising above the din. I'm sealing the room. The console beeped, lights flashing as the emergency measures activated. The blast door sealed with a resounding thud, locking out the alien on the other side.
a shudder rippled through the structure as the reinforcement shields deployed. Now, Holt shouted, and we turned our weapons back to the remaining aliens, who were momentarily stunned by the sudden shift in the battle. Let's take them down, I yelled, my adrenaline surging as I fired at the closest creature. The energy beam struck true, sending it reeling. It shrieked in agony, a sound that echoed in my ears as I felt a rush of triumph. But there was no time to celebrate. The remaining aliens regrouped, their forms shifting as they adjusted their strategy. They began to move around the perimeter, searching for weaknesses in our defenses. Focus on the entrances, Holt commanded, firing into the fray. We can't let them break through. As the aliens swarmed, the drones buzzed overhead, firing relentlessly. I felt the weight of the situation pressing down on me, the knowledge that our survival depended on our ability to hold the line. Just keep fighting, I shouted, determination fueling my resolve. We're not done yet. As the battle raged on, I could feel the tide of the fight beginning to shift. We had regained some ground, but it was clear that the creatures were adapting, learning from our tactics. They would not be defeated easily. Watch your backs, Vance yelled as he spotted a creature sneaking around our flank. I turned just in time to fire off a shot, the energy beam striking the alien before it could attack. It crumpled to the ground, its body dissolving into a mass of shimmering distortion. But there were too many, and our ammunition was dwindling. Cooper, how's the ammo? Holt asked, glancing over his shoulder. Not good. We've got maybe one more round left, Cooper replied, desperation in his voice. Then we need to end this now, Holt said, determination etched on his face. We have to find a way to disrupt their formation. I could see the gears turning in Holt's mind. He was strategizing, looking for a way to turn our precarious situation into an advantage. Delta, Holt shouted, and I turned, meeting his gaze. Do you remember the thermal charges in the storage bay? Yes, but they're not designed for this kind of... I don't care, Holt interrupted, urgency lacing his voice. We need to set them up as traps. If we can lure the creatures in, we can take out a large group at once. I hesitated, weighing the risks. It's dangerous, if we set them off too early. We don't have a choice, he insisted. We need to act and we need to act fast. Fine, I relented, adrenaline coursing through me. But we need to draw them away from the command center. Holt nodded, a fierce determination in his eyes. Let's do it. With a plan in place, we moved swiftly, coordinating our movements to draw the aliens toward the storage bay. I could hear the growls and shrieks of the creatures as they pursued us, their distorted forms darting through the jungle with unrelenting speed. Get ready, Holt shouted as we neared the storage bay. Once they're in range, we set the charges. I could feel the heat of the situation building as we approached the entrance, my heart racing with anticipation. The aliens were close, their glowing eyes searching for us. Now, Holt shouted, and we turned to face the incoming swarm, our rifles raised. The creatures charged forward, and I took a deep breath, steadying my aim. This was our moment. We had to make it count. Fire, Holt commanded. As we unleashed a hail of energy beams into the swarm, the thermal charges activated, lighting up the area with a blinding flash. The explosion rippled through the air, sending shockwaves of heat and light, engulfing the nearest creatures in a searing inferno. For a moment, time seemed to stand still as the shockwave washed over us. The screams of the aliens filled the air, a cacophony of chaos and destruction. I felt the heat against my skin, the power of the explosion resonating in my bones. When the dust settled, the area was littered with remnants of the creatures, their distorted forms reduced to nothingness. We had done it. We had turned the tide. But victory was short-lived. As the smoke cleared, I realized that the remaining aliens were regrouping, their forms flickering as they adjusted to our tactics. They were still out there, and they were angry. Let's fall back, Vance shouted, urgency creeping into his voice. We need to regroup before they come back. Holt nodded, determination etched on his face. To the command center, now. 
As we retreated, I could feel the adrenaline coursing through my veins, the victory we had just achieved overshadowed by the realization that the battle was far from over. The aliens were relentless, and they would not stop until they had us. With every step, I felt the weight of our situation pressing down on me. We were survivors, fighting against impossible odds, and we needed to find a way to turn this battle into our favor. Delta, keep an eye on the consoles, Holt ordered as we burst into the command center. We need to monitor their movements and find a way to outsmart them. I nodded, settling in at the central console. The screens flickered to life and I could see the outlines of the aliens moving through the jungle. They were circling, strategizing their next move. Damn it, I muttered, frustration creeping in. They're learning our tactics. Then we have to adapt, Holt said, determination shining in his eyes. We need to lure them into a trap. As the sounds of the jungle echoed outside, I could feel the tension building, a palpable reminder of the danger that lurked just beyond the walls. We had faced the impossible, but we still had a chance. Ready or not, we'll face them together, I whispered, resolve surging within me. We would fight until the very end. Our makeshift command center hummed with tension as we monitored the alien movements outside. The screens flickered, displaying their shadows moving in the dense underbrush. It was eerie how quickly they adapted, their instincts sharper than I had ever anticipated. Look at that, I muttered pointing to the screen where a cluster of creatures seemed to pause, their heads swiveling in unison as if they were communicating. They're strategizing. We need to disrupt their coordination, Holt said, his voice steady despite the chaos surrounding us. If we can break their unity, we can turn this fight in our favor. Then let's give them something to focus on, Vance suggested, his eyes narrowing with determination. We set up more thermal charges near the perimeter, bait them in, and detonate. It worked before, right? It did, but we need to be smarter this time, I replied, feeling the weight of the situation pressing down on me. We can't let them flank us again. We'll need a distraction. Cooper, you're our best shot, Holt said, turning to him. You think you can draw them in? Cooper swallowed hard but nodded. I can make some noise. If they see me, they'll definitely follow. Then let's do it, I said, adrenaline surging through my veins. We set up the traps and created distraction. It's risky, but it might be our best shot at getting out of this alive. The plan was set in motion quickly. While Cooper gathered supplies for the distraction, we moved to reinforce our defenses. Vance and I worked to set up the thermal charges strategically placing them along the jungle perimeter to create a deadly trap. As I worked, I couldn't shake the feeling of eyes watching us. The jungle felt alive, the sounds of the night blending into a symphony of danger. Each snap of a twig or rustle of leaves sent shivers down my spine. Ready, Holt asked, breaking me from my thoughts. Just about, I replied, securing the last charge. Cooper, are you ready? Let's do this, he said, a fierce determination etched across his face. He stepped outside the command center, and we watched through the viewport as he moved deeper into the jungle, purposely drawing attention to himself. Now we wait, Vance said, tension thick in the air as we monitored the screens. The moment Cooper stepped into the open, the alien shadows began to stir, their movements quickening. There they go, I whispered, my heart racing. The creatures were honing in on him, their predatory instincts kicking in as they caught sight of their prey, just like we planned. As Cooper began to make noise shouting, banging on metal scraps, anything to attract their attention, I could see the aliens responding. Their movements became frantic, darting toward him with unnerving speed. Get ready, Holt commanded. As soon as they're in position, we set off the charges. The tension in the room was electric as we watched the aliens converge on Cooper. He had done his part, but now it was up to us to execute our plan flawlessly. The creatures began to encircle him, their forms flickering as they prepared to attack. Now, Holt shouted, and we triggered the thermal charges. The explosions lit up the night, fire erupting through the jungle as the charges detonated in a series of blinding flashes. 
The shockwave rippled through the air, and the screams of the aliens filled the jungle. They were caught off guard, some flung back by the force of the blasts, while others shrieked in pain, their bodies enveloped in flames. Keep firing, Holt yelled, and we unleashed a torrent of energy beams into the chaos, targeting the disoriented creatures. The air crackled with energy as we took down one after another, the tide of battle shifting in our favor. Cooper, get back, I shouted, knowing he was still in danger. The remaining aliens were recovering, their fury palpable as they regrouped, their forms swirling around in a chaotic dance. I'm on it, Cooper yelled, sprinting back toward the command center, dodging through the foliage as the remaining aliens charged after him. Cover him, Vance shouted, firing wildly as Cooper approached. I aimed my weapon at the nearest alien, my heart pounding as I pulled the trigger. The beam struck true, sending the creature tumbling back. Almost there, Cooper shouted, and I could see the glint of determination in his eyes. He was so close to safety. Keep it up, Holt urged, firing round after round. We're almost through. Just as Cooper reached the entrance, one of the aliens lunged forward, its maw wide open. Time seemed to slow as I realized he wouldn't make it. Without thinking, I lunged forward, firing off a shot that hit the creature just as it closed in on Cooper. The alien screeched, but I didn't wait to see if it was down. I pulled Cooper into the command center, slamming the door shut behind us as we breathed heavily, adrenaline flooding our systems. Are you okay? I asked, checking him over for injuries. Yeah, I'm fine, he panted, glancing back at the door. But they're still out there. Then we need to prepare for their next move, Holt said, urgency in his tone. We need to regroup and fortify our defenses. They'll be coming for us. We all nodded, falling into our roles as we strategized our next steps. The earlier victories had given us a boost of hope, but we couldn't afford to underestimate our enemies. The aliens were relentless, and they would adapt. We need to find a way to disable their ability to phase, I suggested, my mind racing. If we can disrupt their control, we might be able to weaken them. How do we do that? Vance asked, brow furrowed in thought. Maybe there's a way to manipulate the energy signatures around them, I replied, excitement building as the idea took shape. If we can create a frequency that disrupts their phasing ability, we could ground them. Then let's do it, Holt said, determination in his voice. We'll gather whatever we can find to create that frequency. As we gathered equipment and supplies, I could feel the weight of our situation pressing down on me. The aliens were out there, regrouping, but we had a plan. We were taking control of the situation, fighting back with every resource at our disposal. Are we ready? Holt asked, looking around at our small group. Ready as we'll ever be, Vance replied, determination shining in his eyes. Then let's show them what we're made of, Holt said, resolve radiating from him. We'll show them that we're not just survivors. We're fighters. With our makeshift frequency disruptor assembled, we moved back to the viewport. I felt a rush of adrenaline as I watched the aliens milling around outside, their forms flickering in and out of sight. On my mark, Holt instructed, and we braced ourselves for the next phase of our plan. The moment the aliens moved within range, I activated the disruptor, a pulse of energy washing over the area. The air shimmered as the frequency resonated, and I watched as the aliens stumbled, their forms momentarily destabilized. It's working, Vance shouted, excitement bubbling over. Keep firing, Holt commanded, and we unleashed a barrage of energy beams into the disoriented creatures. The results were immediate many of them were unable to phase their forms flickering as they were hit. But the remaining aliens were furious. They began to regroup, moving with an intensity I had never seen before. Keep it up, I shouted, determination pushing me forward. We can't let them recover. As we fought, I felt a surge of hope. We were pushing them back, but I knew this was just the beginning. The battle was far from over, and we had to remain vigilant. More incoming, Cooper yelled pointing to the jungle as another wave of aliens surged forward. Brace yourselves, Holt shouted, determination etched on his face. We can do this. 
As the chaos unfolded, I could feel the tide of battle shifting again. We had taken the upper hand, but the aliens were relentless, and I knew we had to finish this. Together, I yelled, adrenaline coursing through my veins as we readied ourselves for the final push. The night was thick with tension as we prepared to face the swarm once more. The world outside felt like a battleground, and we were the last line of defense against the chaos. Let's finish this, Holt shouted, and we charged into the fray, ready to fight until the very end. The chaos of the battle surged around us, and I could feel the adrenaline coursing through my veins as we prepared to face the next wave of alien attackers. The air crackled with energy, and the scents of burnt earth and ozone filled my nostrils, mingling with the undercurrent of fear that thrummed beneath the surface. Push forward, Holt shouted, rallying our group. The words ignited something in me, and I tightened my grip on my weapon. We were no longer just survivors. We were fighters, and we were determined to reclaim our home. The aliens emerged from the underbrush, their grotesque forms illuminated by the sporadic bursts of light from our weapons. They moved in sync, a collective force driven by primal instinct and rage. I could see the determination in their movements, the hunger to reclaim what they believed was rightfully theirs. Get ready, Vance shouted, and I felt my heart pounding in my chest. They're coming. With a deafening roar, the aliens surged forward, their eyes glinting with malice. I unleashed a volley of energy beams, striking down the first few that broke through the perimeter. The disorienting frequency we had created still had some effect, causing their phasing to falter, but I knew it wouldn't last forever. More coming from the left, Cooper yelled, pointing as a new wave broke through the foliage. I turned just in time to see a group of larger aliens barreling toward us, their claws outstretched and teeth bared. Flank left, Holt shouted and we moved in unison, positioning ourselves to counter their assault. I fired again, my aim steady as I picked off the aliens one by one, but I could feel the strain of the battle wearing on me. We need to take out their leader, I shouted, spotting a massive creature hovering at the back of the group. It was larger than the rest, its presence dominating, as it commanded the others with a series of guttural growls. I see it, Holt said, locking eyes with the creature. We take it down. We break their morale. I nodded, adrenaline surging as we pushed forward. Cover me, I yelled, sprinting toward the alien leader while dodging incoming attacks from the smaller aliens. The jungle erupted into chaos as we fought through the horde. I ducked and weaved, feeling the rush of air as an alien claw grazed my shoulder. Pain lanced through me, but I didn't stop. I could see the leader now, its eyes fixed on me a mixture of rage and confusion crossing its features. Together, Holt shouted, joining my side as we unleashed our firepower on the leader. Energy beams struck true, causing the creature to roar in anger as it staggered back. Keep going, Vance shouted, providing covering fire as more aliens surged forward, attempting to protect their leader. I could feel my heart racing, the fear pushing me forward as we fought against the odds. With one final push, we targeted the alien leader, pouring everything we had into our weapons. The air crackled with energy, and as the final blast struck, the creature let out a deafening roar before collapsing, its body crumpling to the ground. Now, Holt shouted, and the remaining aliens faltered, their collective focus shattered. I felt a surge of hope as I watched the remaining attackers hesitating, glancing back at their fallen leader. Push them back, Vance yelled, and we surged forward, taking advantage of their momentary confusion. The tide of battle began to shift, our spirits lifted by the sight of the alien leader's defeat. With renewed energy, we fought relentlessly, taking down the remaining aliens one by one. I could see the fear in their eyes as they began to retreat, their primal instincts overriding their desire to fight. Don't let up, Holt yelled, determination etched on his face. We can't let them regroup. The jungle erupted into a cacophony of noise as we chased the retreating aliens, the thrill of victory surging through me. We were doing it, we were pushing them back. But as we pressed on, a sense of unease settled over me. Something feels off, I muttered, glancing around the chaotic scene. 
The jungle felt alive, the energy shifting as I sensed an impending threat lurking just beyond our line of sight. Keep your guard up, Holt warned, catching my expression. We're not out of this yet. As we moved deeper into the jungle, I could hear the distant sounds of alien shrieks echoing through the trees. It was a haunting sound, filled with fury and despair. Where are they going? Cooper asked, confusion flickering in his eyes. Regrouping, I suggested, but even as I said it, I knew there was something more. They're not just retreating, they're planning something. Then we need to find them, Holt said, determination hardening his features. We can't let them regroup and strategize. We moved stealthily through the underbrush, our senses heightened as we navigated the jungle. The atmosphere shifted, tension building in the air as we followed the distant sounds of alien communication. After what felt like an eternity, we stumbled upon a clearing. My heart raced as I spotted a cluster of aliens, their forms flickering in and out of visibility. They were gathered around a massive structure, something I had never seen before. What the hell is that? Vance whispered, awe and fear mingling in his voice. I don't know, I replied, my mind racing. The structure appeared to pulse with energy, its surface shimmering like liquid metal. It was unlike anything we had encountered before. Whatever it is, we can't let them activate it, Holt said, determination etched on his face. We need to take them down before they can use it. As we prepared to engage, I felt a wave of dread wash over me. Wait, I said, holding up my hand. What if that thing is powering their abilities? We need to disable it. Then let's figure out how to do that, Cooper said, his eyes narrowing with determination. We took a moment to assess the situation. The aliens were still focused on their gathering, oblivious to our presence. We had a chance to strike first, but we needed to be smart about it. I'll create a distraction, I said, pointing to a nearby pile of debris. If I can draw them away, you guys can sneak in and disable that structure. Are you sure? Holt asked, concern flickering in his eyes. Trust me, I replied, determination surging through me. I'll make it work. All right, but be careful, Vance said, nodding in agreement. With a deep breath, I moved quietly through the underbrush, positioning myself closer to the clearing. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest adrenaline coursing through my veins as I prepared to make my move. On my mark, I whispered to myself, watching as the aliens continued their rituals around the structure. I had to be quick and precise. With a sudden burst of energy, I hurled a rock into the clearing, creating a loud crash that echoed through the air. Instantly, the aliens snapped their heads in my direction, their eyes narrowing as they focused on the noise. Now, I shouted, sprinting back toward my team. I could hear the sounds of the aliens pursuing me, their furious roars echoing behind me. Go, I yelled as I reached my team. Now's your chance. Holt and Vance darted forward, weaving through the chaos as they rushed toward the pulsing structure. I felt the weight of urgency bearing down on me as I turned to face the approaching aliens, my weapon raised and ready. Come on, I shouted firing at the closest creature as it lunged for me. The blast struck true, and it staggered back, but more were coming. Keep moving, I yelled, my heart racing as I fought off the onslaught. The adrenaline surged as I felt the thrill of battle, but I knew I couldn't hold them off forever. Almost there, Holt shouted from the structure, determination etched across his features. I could see Vance at the control panel, fingers flying over the buttons as he attempted to decipher the alien technology. I fought fiercely, my energy beams lighting up the night as I kept the aliens at bay. The jungle erupted into chaos, the sounds of battle mingling with the eerie shrieks of the creatures. Come on, come on, I shouted, feeling the pressure mounting. I could sense the tide of battle shifting, and I knew we needed to finish this quickly. Hurry, Vance shouted, his voice filled with urgency. I think I can disable it. Just as the last alien lunged at me, I fired off a desperate shot, hitting it square in the chest. It fell to the ground, but more were surging forward. Holt, I yelled, feeling the panic rising in my chest. We need to. 
The air erupted with a blinding flash as Vance activated the control panel. A wave of energy surged through the clearing, the structure pulsating violently as the energy shifted. I felt a wave of relief wash over me as the remaining aliens faltered, their forms flickering as the power they relied on dissipated. It's working, Holt shouted, determination radiating from him. With a final push, we unleashed everything we had on the remaining creatures, pouring our energy into the fight. The tide of battle turned in our favor as the aliens began to retreat, their confidence shattered. Keep it up, I shouted, adrenaline coursing through my veins as I chased after them. We could finally reclaim our territory, but I knew we needed to finish this once and for all. With one last surge, we pushed forward, targeting the remaining aliens as they tried to flee. The jungle echoed with our battle cries, the air thick with the scent of smoke and victory. As the last alien fell, silence enveloped the clearing. We stood there, breathless and battered, but victorious. We had done it. We had fought back the threat and reclaimed our ground. Is it over? Cooper asked, glancing around as the adrenaline began to fade. For now, Holt said, breathing heavily, but we need to regroup and make sure they don't come back. I nodded, feeling a sense of pride swelling within me. We had faced the odds and emerged victorious, but the war was far from over. We'll keep fighting, I said, determination igniting in my chest. We'll make sure they never threaten us again. As we turned to leave the clearing, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. The jungle was our home, and we would protect it at all costs. As we made our way back through the jungle, the adrenaline that had fueled our fight began to ebb, replaced by a heavy weariness. The sounds of the jungle were muted now, a stark contrast to the chaos we had just survived. The air felt thick with the scent of scorched earth and the remnants of battle, a haunting reminder of what we had faced. Are we sure it's really over? Cooper asked, glancing back toward the clearing where we had fought so hard. His voice was filled with a mix of relief and apprehension. For now, yes, Holt replied, his brow furrowed in thought. But we need to stay vigilant. There are more of them out there, and they'll be looking for a way to retaliate. I nodded in agreement, feeling the weight of his words settle heavily in my chest. We had pushed them back, but the victory felt hollow. The threat remained, lurking just beyond the edges of our territory, waiting for the perfect moment to strike again. Let's regroup with the others, I suggested, leading the way through the thick underbrush. The familiar paths of our home felt different now, marked by the scars of battle. Every rustle of leaves and snap of branches sent a jolt of anxiety through me. As we arrived at the main camp, the mood was tense but hopeful. Survivors gathered around the remnants of the previous night's battle, their faces etched with fatigue but alive with a sense of triumph. They greeted us with cheers, their spirits lifted by our success. What happened out there? asked Eli, one of the older members of our group, stepping forward with a concerned look. We heard the commotion, but we didn't know if you'd make it back. We fought them off, Holt said, his voice steady. But they're not gone for good. We've only bought ourselves some time. Eli nodded, understanding etched into his expression. We need to fortify our defenses then. If they regroup, we'll be ready. Agreed, I said, feeling a surge of determination. We need to take the fight to them. We can't just wait for them to come back. We need to find their base and end this. The group murmured in agreement, their resolve hardening as we discussed our next steps. We shared the details of the battle, recounting the sight of the alien leader falling, the moment the tide had turned in our favor. As night fell, we set to work fortifying our defenses. The flickering light of fires illuminated our faces as we constructed barriers and laid traps in preparation for the inevitable counterattack. The jungle felt alive around us, a cacophony of sounds echoing through the trees, but we remained focused on our task. Where do you think they regrouped? Vance asked, pulling me aside as we worked. They must have a place they retreat to. I don't know, I replied, rubbing my temple as I tried to piece together what I had seen. But we need to figure it out. We can't let them gain the upper hand again. There's a cave system to the north, 
he suggested, his voice low. I heard some of the others talking about it. They said it was a potential hideout for the aliens. A cave system, I mused, considering the possibility. That could be where they're regrouping. If we can find it, we might be able to disrupt their plans. Then let's go check it out, Vance said, determination in his eyes. The sooner we act, the better. We gathered our group and shared the information about the cave system. The mood was tense, but there was an undercurrent of excitement as we prepared for our next move. We were no longer just survivors, we were fighters, and we were ready to take the fight to the enemy. As dawn broke, we set out toward the north, navigating through the thick underbrush with renewed purpose. The jungle felt different in the morning light, the vibrant colors alive with the promise of a new day. Stay sharp, Holt warned, leading the way. We don't know what we might encounter. We moved quietly, the sounds of the jungle muffled as we approached the rumored location of the cave. My heart raced with anticipation, a mix of fear and determination surging through me. We had faced the aliens before, but this time felt different. This time, we were going into their territory. As we neared the cave entrance, the atmosphere shifted. The air grew heavy with tension, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. I could feel the weight of unseen eyes watching us from the shadows. Here it is, I whispered, pointing to the dark opening ahead. It loomed like a gaping mouth, ready to swallow us whole. Let's move, Holt commanded, his voice steady as we stepped into the darkness. The cave was cool and damp, the air thick with the smell of earth and decay. My heart raced as we ventured deeper, the darkness enveloping us. We switched on our flashlights, the beams cutting through the gloom. Shadows danced along the walls, twisting and turning as we moved cautiously forward. The sound of dripping water echoed in the distance, mingling with the occasional skittering of unseen creatures. Keep your eyes peeled, I said, my voice low. We don't know what we'll find down here. As we delved deeper into the cave, the oppressive silence wrapped around us like a shroud. The passageways twisted and turned, leading us deeper into the heart of the alien lair. What if this is a trap? Cooper asked, anxiety creeping into his voice. What if they're waiting for us? They won't expect us to come in here, Holt replied, his confidence steadying us. We have the element of surprise. Suddenly, a sound echoed through the cave, a low rumble that sent a shiver down my spine. We froze, exchanging worried glances. What was that? Vance whispered, his eyes wide with fear. I don't know, I replied, my heart pounding. But we need to keep moving. We pressed on, navigating through the twisting tunnels until we stumbled upon a large chamber. The walls were slick with moisture, illuminated by strange bioluminescent fungi that glowed a sickly green. In the center of the chamber stood a massive alien device, pulsating with energy. It resembled the structure we had seen before, but this one was even more intricate, its surface covered in glowing symbols that pulsed in rhythm with the machine's hum. That must be their command center, Holt breathed, awe and fear mixing in his voice. If we can destroy it, we can disrupt their entire operation. But how do we do that? Cooper asked, scanning the area for any signs of weakness. I don't know, I admitted, studying the device closely. But we need to find a way to disable it. Just then, the ground trembled beneath our feet, a deep rumble resonating through the chamber. The machine began to whir louder, the energy surging as if it were coming to life. Get back, Holt shouted pulling us away from the device as it began to spark and crackle. We need to find a way out of here. The chamber erupted into chaos as alien soldiers poured in from the shadows, their grotesque forms emerging from the darkness. They advanced toward us with menacing snarls, weapons raised, ready to attack. Fight, I shouted, raising my weapon as we prepared to defend ourselves. The tension in the air was palpable, and I could feel the weight of the moment pressing down on me. The battle erupted in the chamber, chaos consuming us as we fought against the onslaught of aliens. Energy beams lit up the darkness, illuminating the twisted faces of our attackers. Hold the line, Holt yelled, his voice filled with determination. We can't let them overwhelm us. 
I fired off rounds, my heart racing as I fought to protect my team. The air crackled with energy and the sounds of battle echoed through the cave. Just as it seemed like we were gaining the upper hand, the alien device emitted a deafening roar, the ground shaking violently beneath us. The energy surged, crackling like lightning as it pulsed with terrifying power. What's happening? Vance shouted, panic creeping into his voice. I don't know, but we need to disable it now, I yelled, my mind racing. We couldn't let this device go off. It would unleash chaos throughout the jungle. Cooper, you and Vance get to that control panel, Holt shouted, pointing to a cluster of alien technology. See if you can shut it down. On it, Cooper replied, sprinting toward the panel as Vance followed. Keep them off us, I shouted, turning to face the incoming aliens. The odds felt insurmountable, but I knew we had to hold the line. We fought fiercely, adrenaline surging through me as I focused on keeping the aliens at bay. The room felt alive with chaos, a cacophony of noise and energy as we pushed against the tide. Almost there, Cooper yelled, his voice filled with urgency. I could see the determination etched on his face as he and Vance worked to decipher the alien technology. But the aliens were relentless, surging forward in waves. Just when I thought we were gaining ground, they would regroup and charge at us again. Keep fighting, Holt shouted, pushing forward alongside me. We fought back to back, our movements synchronized as we covered each other's flanks. Just a little longer, Vance shouted his fingers flying over the control panel as he worked to understand the alien tech. I think I can shut it down. The room shook again, the energy building to an unbearable level. I could feel the fear creeping into my heart, but I pushed it down. We had come too far to fail now. Suddenly, there was a blinding flash of light as the device overloaded, a shockwave radiating outwards. I shielded my eyes as the room erupted in chaos. Get down, Holt shouted, tackling me to the ground just as the shockwave hit. The world spun around us, and I felt the heat of the explosion wash over me. My ears rang, and everything went dark. The darkness enveloped me like a heavy blanket, disorienting and oppressive. My senses were dulled, the chaos of the cave fading into an echoing void. I fought against the sensation, struggling to regain consciousness as I felt the ground shift beneath me. A muffled sound broke through the haze, like a distant rumble of thunder. Gradually, the world came back into focus. I blinked against the brightness that flooded my vision, squinting as the remnants of the explosion played like a slow-motion film in my mind. Eh? The voice cut through the fog, sharp and insistent. I turned my head, trying to locate its source, but my body felt heavy, sluggish. Wake up! Holt's voice. The realization jolted me into action. I pushed myself up, my surroundings coming into sharper focus. The chamber was in ruins, debris scattered everywhere. The alien device lay in a crumpled heap, smoke billowing from its shattered form. Zane, thank God, Holt exclaimed, relief flooding his voice as he rushed to my side. Are you okay? I, I struggled to find my words my mind still racing to piece together what had happened. What about the others? They're here. They're okay, he assured me, helping me to my feet. Cooper and Vance are working to regroup. But we need to move. The cave isn't safe anymore. I shook my head to clear the lingering fog, my heart pounding with urgency. Right? Let's get out of here. As I regain my bearings, I scan the chamber. The alien soldiers had been temporarily subdued, their bodies scattered among the rubble. A sense of triumph surged within me, but I knew we couldn't linger. Over here, Cooper's voice rang out from across the chamber. He stood with Vance, both of them hurriedly gathering their gear. The moment I locked eyes with Cooper, a sense of relief washed over me. Is everyone all right? I asked as I joined them, scanning for any injuries. We're good but we need to hustle, Vance replied, his face streaked with dirt and sweat. I think the explosion might have triggered a cave in further down. Let's go, I urged, glancing at Holt. We need to make our way back to the surface. We can't let them regroup. 
Together, we navigated through the wreckage, our hearts pounding as we retraced our steps. The cave felt different now, the walls closing in as the air grew thicker with each passing moment. We have to be careful, Holt cautioned, his voice low. There could be more of them lurking around. As we made our way through the labyrinth of tunnels, the sounds of the jungle began to seep through the cracks. The distant calls of creatures echoed above, a reminder of the world outside. Keep moving, I urged, the sense of urgency gnawing at me. We pressed forward, adrenaline coursing through our veins as we navigated the dark corridors. Suddenly, a loud rumble reverberated through the cave, the ground shaking violently beneath us. We stumbled, trying to regain our balance as the walls began to shift. Run, I shouted, sprinting forward as the cave threatened to collapse around us. The darkness closed in, but I could see a faint light ahead. We pushed ourselves harder, racing toward the exit. The sound of falling rock echoed behind us, a constant reminder of the danger nipping at our heels. Almost there, Cooper shouted, his voice filled with determination. The exit loomed ahead, a beacon of hope in the darkness. With one final burst of energy, we dashed through the opening, emerging into the bright light of day. The jungle spread out before us, alive and vibrant, but our victory felt bittersweet. We collapsed onto the ground, gasping for breath as the reality of what we had just faced washed over us. The sun felt warm on our skin, a stark contrast to the cold, damp darkness we had just escaped. Is everyone all right? I asked, scanning the group. Yeah, just a little shaken, Vance replied, his face pale but determined. We made it. Now what? Cooper asked, glancing back toward the cave. The entrance was still visible, but it felt like a different world. We regroup and figure out our next steps, Holt said, his voice steady. We can't let this defeat us. As we sat in the shade of the trees, I felt a renewed sense of determination. We had faced unimaginable odds and emerged alive, but I knew we still had a fight ahead of us. What if they're already regrouping, I pondered aloud. What if they're planning a counterattack? We need to alert the others, Holt said, nodding. We can't let our guard down. With a plan in place, we gathered our strength and made our way back to our camp. The jungle felt different now, the vibrant colors overshadowed by the weight of our recent battle. But we had survived, and that meant we had a chance to fight back. When we arrived at the camp, the atmosphere was tense but filled with a sense of camaraderie. Survivors gathered around the central fire, their faces illuminated by the flames as they shared stories of resilience and bravery. Zane, you made it back, Eli called, rushing over to us. We were worried. We're all good, I reassured him, exchanging relieved glances with my team. But we need to prepare. The aliens will be back. Good, Holt said, nodding. We need to get everyone organized. If they come back, we need to be ready. As we worked alongside the others, a sense of unity filled the air. We were no longer just survivors. We were a community fighting for our home. The memory of our battle lingered in our minds, a reminder of what we had faced and the strength we had found within ourselves. Days turned into weeks as we prepared for the inevitable confrontation. The jungle became our ally, and we utilized its secrets to our advantage, setting traps and fortifying our defenses. But the longer we waited, the more the weight of uncertainty pressed on me. The jungle felt restless, as if it too anticipated the coming storm. I found myself drawn to the edge of our territory, staring into the depths of the trees, searching for signs of our enemy. Zane, Vance called, breaking me from my thoughts. Come on. We need you over here. I turned to see him waving me over to the central fire. The others had gathered, their expressions serious. What's going on? I asked as I approached. We've received reports from the perimeter, Holt said, his voice steady. They're gathering forces. A hush fell over the group as the weight of his words settled in. We had known this moment would come, but the reality was far more daunting than I had anticipated. How many? Cooper asked, his brow furrowing. 
Enough to make this a serious fight, Holt replied. We need to act quickly. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting an orange glow over the camp, we set to work devising a plan. Our fate lay ahead of us, and we had to face it together. We gathered around the fire, strategizing and sharing ideas. The air buzzed with tension, but there was also an undercurrent of determination that kept us going. We need to split our forces, I suggested, pacing as I spoke. Some of us can hold the line while the others flank their position. If we can cut them off, we might have a chance. Agreed, Holt said, nodding thoughtfully. But we have to be careful if we spread ourselves too thin. I'll lead the flank, I declared, a fierce sense of purpose igniting within me. If we can disrupt their advance, it could buy us enough time to regroup and mount a stronger defense. I'll go with you, Vance said, stepping forward. We can cover more ground together. Me too, Cooper added. I'm not letting you face them alone. All right, I said, feeling the weight of their support. But we need to be smart about this. We can't let our emotions drive our decisions. As we finalized our plans, the reality of what lay ahead settled heavily on my shoulders. We were going into the heart of danger, but we had each other's backs, and that gave me strength. The night stretched on, our voices low as we shared our fears and hopes. We were ready to face the darkness, to confront the aliens and reclaim our territory. With the first light of dawn, we set out, the air thick with tension as we moved through the jungle. Each step felt heavy with purpose, the anticipation building with every rustle of leaves. As we reached the perimeter, the sounds of the jungle faded, replaced by the distant hum of alien activity. The unmistakable vibrations of machinery echoed through the trees, a reminder of the enemy lurking just beyond. Stay alert, I whispered, my heart racing as I scanned the area. We're close. Do you see anything? Vance asked, his voice low. I nodded, spotting movement through the underbrush. The silhouettes of alien soldiers shifted in the distance, their forms menacing against the backdrop of the trees. Now's our chance, I said, my voice steady. We move in and disrupt their formation. With that, we moved silently through the foliage, the jungle concealing us as we closed in on the enemy. The tension in the air was palpable, every heartbeat echoing in my ears. We reached the edge of their camp, our breath shallow as we assessed the situation. The aliens were preparing for something gathering supplies, checking equipment. They were focused, unaware of our presence. On my mark, I instructed, my heart pounding in anticipation. Three, two, one. We surged forward, erupting from the shadows as we launched our surprise attack. The chaos was instantaneous, the sound of gunfire blending with the alien cries of confusion. I moved through the fray, adrenaline coursing through me as I fought alongside my comrades. The air crackled with energy, each shot fired a testament to our resolve. Push forward, I shouted, rallying my team as we pressed deeper into their ranks. We had the element of surprise, and we had to exploit it. As we fought, I caught sight of their commander, a towering figure barking orders, rallying the remaining soldiers. I locked eyes with Vance, a silent understanding passing between us. Let's take him out, I shouted, leading the charge toward the commander. We fought our way through the chaos, dodging blasts of energy as we pushed toward our target. The alien commander loomed closer, his menacing presence fueling our determination. With a surge of strength, I lunged forward, catching the commander off guard. We clashed in a flurry of blows, each strike met with ferocity. The alien was strong, but I felt the fire of humanity igniting within me. Vance joined me, flanking the commander as we fought side by side. Together, we worked to dismantle the alien's defenses, each strike a testament to our resolve. Zane, watch out, Vance shouted, barely dodging an energy blast as it seared past us. I twisted narrowly avoiding another strike as I countered with a swift kick, knocking the commander off balance. He stumbled back, but before I could follow through, he recovered and retaliated with a fierce attack. We danced through the fight, my instincts guiding me as I moved. I could feel the rhythm of the battle, 
the pulse of energy as we fought for our survival. The commander roared in anger, rallying his remaining soldiers as he pressed forward. But we were relentless, our resolve unwavering as we fought against the tide of aliens. As the battle raged on, I could feel the tide shifting. The aliens were faltering, their ranks thinning as our determination surged. We had come too far to turn back now. With one final push, I launched myself at the commander, adrenaline fueling my every move. I aimed for his vulnerable spots, striking with precision as I fought to bring him down. Now, I yelled to Vance, our eyes locking in mutual understanding. With a coordinated strike, we brought the commander to his knees. With a final blow, I struck him down, the alien commander collapsing to the ground. A wave of relief washed over me as the remaining soldiers faltered, confusion spreading through their ranks. We did it, I shouted my heart racing with exhilaration. The tide had turned, and victory was within our grasp. The remaining aliens began to retreat, their formation crumbling as they scrambled to escape. The jungle erupted with the sounds of our triumph, our cries echoing in the air. As we regrouped with our team, I could see the pride shining in their eyes. We had faced insurmountable odds and emerged victorious. Let's push them back, Holt shouted his voice filled with determination. We can't let them regroup. Together, we surged forward, chasing the retreating aliens as we fought to reclaim our territory. The jungle became our ally, the vines and trees weaving around us as we navigated through the chaos. The jungle was alive with energy as we pursued the retreating aliens, our adrenaline still coursing through our veins. The air was thick with a scent of damp earth and the distant sounds of wildlife but our focus was solely on the task at hand. Keep pushing, I shouted, leading the charge as we navigated through the dense underbrush. The fleeing aliens were disorganized, their formation shattered, and we had to capitalize on their weakness. We moved swiftly, our footsteps silent against the forest floor. The sounds of the battle faded behind us as we closed the gap, our determination driving us forward. I caught sight of one of the alien soldiers, his eyes wide with panic as he stumbled over a root. Without thinking, I lunged forward, tackling him to the ground. He struggled beneath me, but I held him down, my heart racing. Where are your reinforcements? I demanded, pinning him firmly. Tell me. He squirmed, a guttural sound escaping his throat, but I pressed down harder. You're outnumbered. You have to know that. What are you waiting for? Enough. A voice boomed from behind me. I turned to see Holt striding over, his expression fierce. Let him go, Zane. We don't have time for this. I released the alien soldier, who scrambled to his feet and took off into the underbrush, disappearing into the trees. He could have told us something, I protested, frustration bubbling inside me. Maybe, Holt replied, a hint of irritation in his voice. But we have bigger problems. We need to regroup with the others and fortify our position. Reluctantly, I nodded, following him back to where the rest of our team was gathering. As we regrouped, I felt the weight of our victory mingling with the unease of the uncertain future. Did we really drive them off? Vance asked, wiping sweat from his brow as he scanned the surroundings. What's next? We keep our defenses strong, Holt said, his voice steady. They'll regroup. We need to be ready for whatever they throw at us next. With that, we set to work. We repaired barricade, fortified our camp, and ensured everyone knew their roles. The sense of unity and determination among us felt palpable, each of us driven by the shared goal of survival. Days passed, the tension in the air growing thicker as we prepared for another potential attack. The jungle felt different now, almost eerily quiet as if it too sensed the brewing storm but we stayed vigilant, our resolve unwavering. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in shades of orange and purple, I found myself standing at the edge of our camp, lost in thought. The jungle stretched out before me, its mysteries both enchanting and terrifying. Zane, Cooper called, approaching me with a determined look on his face. We need to talk. I turned to face him, sensing the weight of his words. What's on your mind? 
I think we should take the fight to them, he said, his voice steady. If we strike first, we can show them we won't back down. I considered his words, the fire of defiance igniting within me. You're right. We've been reactive. It's time to take the offensive. We gathered the others, laying out our plan under the fading light of day. We would strike at dawn, leveraging the element of surprise to hit the alien camp hard and fast. As we prepared for the battle ahead, I felt a mix of anticipation and dread. This was our chance to reclaim our home, but it also meant risking everything we had fought for. When dawn broke, we moved with purpose, our hearts pounding in synchrony as we navigated through the jungle. The air was thick with tension, the sun casting dappled light through the leaves as we approached the alien camp. Stay low, I whispered, leading the way as we crept closer. The sounds of the jungle faded into the background, replaced by the thrum of our resolve. We reached the edge of their camp, and I felt a surge of adrenaline. The aliens were caught off guard, their guards scattered and unprepared. This was our moment. Go, I shouted, launching myself into the fray as the others followed suit. The jungle erupted with the sounds of battle, the clash of weapons ringing in the air. I fought with everything I had, my instincts guiding me as I moved through the chaos. The aliens were scrambling, confusion spreading through their ranks as we pressed forward. The fight was fierce, each moment a blur of movement and adrenaline. I fought alongside my team, our determination merging into a single force. We had come too far to falter now. As we pushed deeper into the heart of the alien camp, I caught sight of the alien commander, the very same one we had faced before. He was shouting orders, rallying his troops but I felt a fierce determination rising within me. This ends now, I roared, charging toward him. We clashed again, the world around us fading as I focused solely on the battle before me. He was strong, but I had something he didn't, the fire of humanity, the will to survive. With a surge of energy, I struck, landing a blow that sent him staggering back. Vance joined me, and together, we fought with everything we had. This was our moment. With one final push, we brought the commander to his knees, the weight of our struggle crashing down around us. The remaining aliens faltered, their resolve crumbling as they witnessed their leader fall. Retreat, one of the remaining aliens shouted, panic spreading like wildfire as they scrambled to escape. As the last of the aliens fled into the jungle, we stood victorious, panting and bruised but alive. A wave of relief washed over me as the reality of our triumph sunk in. We had done it. The camp erupted in cheers as we regrouped, embracing one another in celebration. We had faced our fears, fought against insurmountable odds, and emerged victorious. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow over our camp, I took a moment to reflect on everything we had endured. The jungle was our home, and we had fought to protect it. In the days that followed, we worked to rebuild, our spirits soaring as we celebrated our victory. The bond we had forged in battle only grew stronger, each of us forever changed by the experiences we had shared. As I stood at the edge of our camp, watching the stars twinkle above, I felt a deep sense of gratitude. We had come together as warriors, but we had also forged a family. The jungle would always hold its secrets, but we had learned to navigate its depths to face the unknown with courage and resilience. And as we continued to defend our home, I knew one thing for certain, humanity would rise, no matter the odds. We would stand united, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead.